It's just after dawn on Stillwater Cove, where California's Pacific Coast meets the celebrated golf course at Pebble Beach. But the competitors entering the fairway today aren't bringing their clubs, they're bringing their cars. And what remarkable cars they are. Oh, yes. Actor and auto enthusiast Edward Herman is among those up early for a first look. It's full of people who come out in the gray dawn light and welcome the owners onto the field. Many come from the earliest days of motoring, living examples of makes that died off long ago. Pierce Arrow, Packard, Duesenberg. How are you, Steve? Good, how are you? Right, no, Steve. Each driver is greeted by Sandra Button, the chairman of the Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance, the competition of elegance. The cars look like jewelry laying out in somebody's jewelry case. And like fine jewelry, the cars are carefully polished and presented, as much pieces of art as they are machines. Well, even though a car is a machine, just like your refrigerator, it's not. It's something that kind of reflects your style. It's an event that uh, reaches back to an age of a little more uh, gentility. While this event exudes sophistication, glamour, and good manners, look under the hood and you'll find fierce competition. If you bring your car to Pebble Beach, you're here to win, and winning something at Pebble Beach matters. I feel like I should take my shoes off. No, you it's... can leave them on. At his home near Pebble Beach, Chip Connor has high hopes for his 1938 Alfa Romeo Touring Spider. I don't want to jinx myself, so I'm not going to suggest that, uh, you know, that I'm going to be cutthroat in terms of my aspiration. But uh, the car is going to be a real contender. Jim Patterson from Louisville, Kentucky, thinks he could have a winner, too. This is his 1933 Delage D8S de Villers Roadster. Even though most of the people that we've met in the last few years are good friends, we still compete. You want to beat them. We want to beat them. Everyone on the field wants to win Best of Show. That's why you're there. Emily and Sam Mann from Englewood, New Jersey, are showing a 1930 Duesenberg that they are certain is worthy of a top prize. Well, look at it. I mean, it's just spectacular. These magnificent expressive lines, you know, the, the finesse to things like the way this finishes and fender finishes in a blade virtually. Of course, this spectacular design can come with a spectacular price. To get an idea just how big, drop into the auction tent where David Gooding's company is offering more than 100 classic cars for sale. This is one of the fastest, most expensive, and most powerful cars that you could buy in the, in the 1920s. This 1928 Mercedes-Benz uh, is valued at more than $3.7 million. Yeah. For a used car. For a used car, a well-used car, as you can see. But who used it adds to the value. It was owned originally by the Marx Brothers, so it's got a wonderful, wonderful Hollywood history. The Hollywood elite once gathered to watch the Marx Brothers Mercedes race a Duesenberg owned by Clark Gable's agent. The Marx Brothers lost. But their car did win a bit part in the Katherine Hepburn, Cary Grant movie, Sylvia Scarlet. I like the way that car goes. Yeah, it's all right. And over here, this guy yeah, flashy. Yeah, one of, one of the stars of our event. This is going to be on our Saturday night auction. Here, one, $2 million. $2 million. Thank you. At that Saturday night sale, the winning bid on the 1951 Ferrari was $2.3 million. Sold your car, sir. Thank right. you very much. Well, well done, done, sir. Over the Concours d'Elegance weekend, Gooding's company sold 106 cars for a total of almost $65 million. There's a lot of money being spent around here. Is this too extravagant yes. for these days? Yes, it probably is. Yes. I don't know how to talk about it, frankly. It's very expensive, but then each of us only have one life to live. And, and you know, if this is your hobby and you've got something truly excellent, it's hard not to want to have the world recognize it as being that. And that recognition is on the line when the judges arrive. Can you high and low, high and low beam? They are knowledgeable and nitpicking. I'm assuming the engine is original to the car. Yep. As the judges ponder their decisions, 
the tension builds. Sometimes the competition gets a little a little crazy. You have to stand back and say, relax, guys, it's a car show, you know. Is this nail-biting time now? Nail-biting time. Well, I was really nervous from about 5 o'clock this morning, actually, if you really need to. Yeah, it's, now it's even more nervous. They're nerve-wracking. And just then, the judges called. Up above. They want us up there. That means? We don't know. Okay. Sam, Emily, many congratulations. Beautiful motor car. When the awards start coming, Sam and Emily Mann's 1930 Duesenberg wins one honor. This award goes to the most elegant open car present, would you believe? But it's not the top honor. The most coveted award is yet to come. Best in show. From the Patterson Collection, the 1933 Delage D.A.S. Stavillers Roaster. Oh, what a car. What a car. The fireworks, streamers, and confetti leave no doubt that in the world of classic cars, this is a big deal as Jim Patterson drives up with his wife, Dorothy. So what did he say when they said best in show? Oh, I, I can't even remember. I, I was shaking. I just wanted him to win so badly. And he wanted to win pretty badly. Yeah, I did. But I sure did. Now, Pebble Beach can return to the golfers, and Jim Patterson can finally relax on a nice, long Sunday drive.